Good evening. It's Wednesday night again. I was hoping to begin the glazing process on Monday, but then again, I had open house on Monday, and we had a 12-hour day, so I was up from 4 till like 10, 30, 11. And then on Tuesday, I uh, had something after, oh, meeting after school. And that means I didn't get home until like, I don't know, 5.36. And that meant, of course, by 8.30, 9 o'clock, I just went, I'm out. So Wednesday rolls about, and yes, I did get a nap, thank God. And um, my son came over, we shoved him large amounts of carbohydrates in our face, and here we are. Um, I figured what I'm going to do now is, is the first stages of glazing. Every potter has a different thumbprint. Uh, a different way of glazing. Some potters uh, get a 55 gallon drum of, of a color they like and they just dip away and then like pour a cup of glaze across it. Okay, other ones uh, will take wax on the bottom, you know, and, and then uh, kind of just pour it in these sections around it and they fill in the inside. That works too. And that's not how we do things. <laughs> of course not. You know me by now. Do I ever do anything the easy way, the economical way, the smart way? Of no. Of course not. So, what we're doing first is called rub and buffing. And it's a technique that's taking about, I want to say, eight or nine years to, to kind of get a hold of and a handle on. And what it is, is I put a lot of detail in my sculptures. And I got to do, some of them have up to eight layers. This is the first layer, and it doesn't work on all of it. No, 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 no. On um, things like this, for instance. Um, this all gets hand-brushed in one layer, and then pulled down, and then a highlight layer. Uh, this, of course, is like three or four layers just to make the lettering stand up. And then the final one is putting the sunset and things behind it, which I think is going to be neat. The face, of course, this will take about three different types of browns and rub and buffing and, and, uh, and then the overlaying of brown and then, of course, the eyes done. Each one of these can take up to uh, two hours, sometimes three hours. And, of course, these are near and dear. These are not for sale. These are actually for uh, a wedded bliss. And uh, these are going to be a pain in the buttocks. But... We're going to do our absolute best because, after all, it's for love. And, you know, what can we say? For Blaze, no, it's for love. No, 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 he said Blaze, that means cheats. No, he said for love. Shut up, witch. I'm not a witch. I'm your wife, and I'm not sure I want to be that anyway. And if you don't know that reference, you need to look it up. All right, so that's what these are going to be. And this one's going to be a willow tree with all these twisting and blowing branches so yes Zach I am working my brains out but uh, we have a deadline and I don't know with me working alone if I'll be able to reach that deadline but I'm gonna try like the Dickens anywho so what you do is you carefully inlay this and I know what you're thinking well, how come my son isn't doing it instead of making the pictures well I'll tell you what it's primarily because my son is one amazing salesperson he truly is he could sell ice to Eskimos he's wonderful wonderfully polite and helpful to our clientele and of course he runs our YouTube and all the rest and he's kind of the people person in the group he also makes a rather nifty security guard if you've ever gotten to meet him in person he's not a tiny person but when it comes to the actual production as a glazer on my work and following technique he's an excellent salesperson um he's <laughs> Everyone likes to think, oh, well, you know, you're just dabbing here and pushing there. It actually takes training. Uh, I spent many, many years training my pack, different techniques. You don't just walk in and start dabbing things on something that took me an hour and a half to sculpt. Um, but I do, if I had my pack or I have some help, I've got a couple of, uh, I want to say, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, acolytes. Uh, no, that isn't it. Um, uh, what is it when a uh, master takes a... Um, An apprentice? Apprentice, that's the word. See, I'm still a little tired. Uh, apprentice. Um, when I you personally get an apprentice, you start minions. him out at the basics and, um, and you work upward. And you'd like to think that, oh, you're just shoving this in and rubbing that off and anybody could do it. Actually, no, there's kind of a touchy-touchy technique. And ask my son sometime when you come to one of our shows, like at Wicked. And uh, draw him aside and go, what's that whole thing about, you know, the glazing deal? He'll tell you. It looks easy. It's not. It's not. Especially frustrating when he's like, okay, I said, don't get anything on the handle. Oh, I won't pop. And, and then, like, you just do this once and it's across your, your, your handle. And then you're like, 
<laughs> and you can't erase this stuff. You either know what you're doing or you don't. And with me and this particular piece, this is my Roaring Wolf, um, it has a lot of texture. So while I'm doing this dull part, and yes, right now that's why I've got uh, Men in Black playing in the background. Um, I, I watch a lot of TV and movies when I glaze and I sculpt. Because this part, to me, I've been doing it for 20-something years, and, and I totally get that uh, you need the attention, but I don't need my whole brain to do it. Um, so I have to kind of occupy that part. What thrills me is when I, I break out my very specially blended colors and I do paintings on it. Like, this one's actually going to have, like, werewolves running in the moonlight, which would be kind of cool. I don't know if you've noticed or not, but I do have a thing for zombies, werewolves, uh, basically creatures of the night. Or they anything else happy. macabre. Oh, absolutely. They make me happy. And, of course, my favorite holiday is coming, and it isn't Christmas. Just letting you know. It's not Christmas, my sister Dorothy and anyone else out there who's watching it while jingling their bells going, I got my Christmas shopping done. Christmas shopping done? I haven't got my grocery shopping done. Christmas shopping, for crying out loud. It's not even Thanksgiving. I haven't even squeezed a turkey yet. But, for me, that's not what's important. What's important is that Hallow's Eve's coming for most of you people. Samhain, for me, it is my favorite holiday. Absolutely time to howl. It's going to be grand. I can't wait. We didn't really decorate that much last year, but we are going to attempt to do a little better of a job, like, I don't know, a pumpkin patch on the roof. Uh, we have a graveyard out front I've been growing all summer. I'll get pictures. I'll post. I'll post. So, so our movie does not run too horribly late. I've got this all the way patched in. And now comes the steady part. This is where the cursing and the screaming comes from my son. Once you've laid in your colors, what you gotta do is you gotta take a sponge, preferably a new one with a nice smooth butt edge. Nice and smooth, see? And then what you gotta do is you've gotta get right pressure and you gotta pull that glaze out. Okay, now watch closely. You pull that glaze out like so. And you can't double wipe. And that's where the apprentices have a difficulty. Because you're like, mm, you know, I see you do more than one pull. No, I turn it and then I pull again. Then I turn it and I pull again. And what you're doing, this is an old technique. It's kind of like how you antique silver when you use your uh, tinctures. And yes, I was a licensed jeweler at one point. Big surprise there. You're going to go in. I'm just going to do the wolf for you and then I'm going to release you. But I want to show you what happens. And this, by the way, is bisqueware. Bisqueware has been fired to 1,200 degrees, somewhere in that region. It's not vitrified, but it's sure a lot stronger than it was when it was greenware before it got fired. When greenware dries out, you fart, you could break it. It's really delicate. But uh, if you uh, fire it bisqueware, it makes it semi-porous. It's not as porous, but it's porous. And uh, it makes it strong enough to lay your glaze layers in. Ah, see, now look, I'm starting to get these wonderful shadows and there's no muddying. If you can only see my son's face as he scowls at me from behind the camera. Yes, muddying, son, that's what we worked on for three years, muddying. My boy likes to get dirty, he likes to mud things. Can't mud things. And then we go in and watch what happens here. Now hold this up and then we'll bid you a good night. Squeeze it out. Oh, yeah. And what I'll do is I'll put a, a clear glaze that's maybe colored. I'm thinking maybe blues. People ask me about that, too. Oh, can I do this color? Can you make it in that color? I got kind of a connection with my pottery. Uh, the pottery tells me what it wants. I know that sounds daffy. I understand. But honestly, when I'm glazing, and if I think to myself, oh, maybe I'll use a nice texture brown or, or, or maybe some amber, you know, I just imagine it while handling and feeling it like this, and the cup literally will tell me what colors to use. And this colors here, it's screaming blues, ice blues, dark blues, midnight blues. It's going to be a cold cup with a nice crisp moonlight, I think. But again, I'll watch it happen. I also want to shade these little nodules here so they don't stand out quite as much, because I'm going to coat those. There. See how that works? And you lay it underneath. That's just one layer. And it's going to take about six layers of colors before I finally get it fired. Right? So, 
Now you've gotten to see a little trade secret. Little trade secret. And by the way, if you get real good, see I got a little on the top there? If you get real good at this, you could squeeze it and you can erase it like that without muddying. See how that works? Takes it right out. All right. Well, I am hoping you both or both. Jeez, only two people are going to watch this video. Well, then again, from what I'm seeing with all the restrictions on a certain social network, I'm wondering if only two people get to see these videos anymore. Uh, I will ask you this. It's kind of an experiment. Do me a favor. If you like our videos, share them. Share them all over the place. Tag them all over. Because I want to see if on my site of Solstice Born Pottery on Facebook, um, I have like 900 and some followers and only 100 see a video, or 130 see a video. And I'm wondering, is it going out to all 900? Or is it only going out to 150? I'm not sure. So I'm thinking if you share them, we're gonna have a better data, all right? So it has been an absolute pleasure this evening, and I'm gonna continue to glaze at least part through the night. And we will talk to you soon. Tune in next week. Be well.